the most important part of astrotheology and syncretism, which is what I'm doing. Syncretism shows how everything, all the theologies, the philosophies, the religions, the sciences, they are all one. And uh, the people from the Renaissance were doing this. Marsilio Ficino, Giovanni Pico della Mirandola, Giordano Bruno, all these guys. You see, what you find when you look at the uh, ancient texts, you find that the theme is exactly the same and especially to the ones who have uh, insight, the uh, exoteric knowers, rather than the exoteric believers. You see, they've, they've been kept in the dark, in the lurch, but the secret of secrets is the grand arcanum, which is hiding in these texts. It's the magnum opus that the philosopher has been looking for, the elixir of life etc. It all has to do with the microcosm. Of course, what else could it be? In the Bible is the story of the microcosm of the man and how man was created. It's a literary masterpiece. But in the Bible, there is only one story, and that is the story of the creation of man and how man is the temple of what they call God or the temple of Solomon. Solomon's temple was not built with uh, hammer or saw, or the, or the sound of hammer or saw. The temple is the body, you see, and this is how it works. This is how the, the temple is built. It's built on the principle of 12, because the universe is built on 12. Everything the universe does, it does through the number 12. 12 is the completeness of its cycles, you see. The human body must correspond to the universe because man is the measure of the universe. The ancients knew that there was a circle in the sky and that circle was traversed by the seven wanderers, the sun and the moon, the two luminaries, and the five visible planets, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. And these seven regulated that path in the sky that they blazed called the ecliptic. The ecliptic is the extension of the equator of the Earth. And they got that line of 360 degrees and they segmented it into 30 degrees because they knew that that's how the, uni the universe gets things done. It does things in 12s. And we have to understand numerology and, and the power of the numbers. What does one mean? What does two mean? What does three mean? Now, I'll get back to that. I'll get back to that. But what they did, the ancients, is they knew that this Temple of Solomon was made of 12 parts, and the parts are these. Aries, the ram, is at the top of the head. Everything starts with Aries in this great science, the great science of astrology. Aries is the first, the number one. Then there's Taurus, number two. And those two houses or signs of the zodiac are in the head. Aries is at the top of the head and it corresponds with the cerebrum and Taurus is at the bottom of the head and the neck and it corresponds with the cerebellum. So you have the higher mind or the higher brain and you have the lower mind or the lower brain. Now we'll get back to the meanings of those words cerebrum and cerebellum because hiding in those two words is the word Israel. Israel is in your head and it consists of the two brains, the cerebrum and the cerebellum. Okay, so we'll get back to that. But in astrology, these two portions were attributed to Aries, the lamb, and Taurus, the bull. Now, in order, descending from the top of the head, in order, after Taurus, you have Gemini, the two arms. Cancer is next, the breast. Leo is next, the heart. Then below that is Virgo, the belly. Below that is Libra, the two kidneys, the scales. The scales of balance, the two kidneys. So here you have the kidneys representing the scales of Libra. Below that, Scorpio, the generative area. Below that, Sagittarius, the hips, because hips comes from hippo, the horse, Sagittarius. Below that, you have Capricorn, the knees, the kneecaps. Below that, you have Aquarius. And then the, the final part of this temple are the two fish, Pisces. Now, Josephus, Philo, Judaeus, all of these great Jewish scholars from thousands of years ago tell you that that is how Solomon's temple was made. It was made in twelves. There were twelve loaves of bread 
Rome came to to literalize them, to pin them down into history, you know, so to speak. And of course, later on, Eusebius put his touches on it. Then later on, you've got Francis Bacon with the King James Version. The Jesuits were also cooking the books on the continent. And of course, now you've got some very, very wealthy elite families that are also cooking the history books. So it's, it's happening all the time. And it did begin with the Flavians. It absolutely did. And they put their um, their touches. Justinian also did a lot of damage. His wife had reincarnation removed from the Bible in the year uh, 530 something. And so they've been at it because when you doctor the books and you change their true message and you overlay it with historical facts and, and things to blur out the true beautiful message that is at the bottom of it, um, you do that for control so that the people do not know the true riches of the wisdom that's in these scriptures. And I'm uncovering those, those true riches that are in the Bible. And you have to understand that the Bible is the greatest astrological treatise in the history of this planet. It is the one and only. It's astrology at its best.